Welcome to the Higher Power Podcast, where your safe zone for discovering your true self is created. We are your hosts, Frank Sieben and Jill Humphreys. On tonight's episode of the Higher Power Podcast, we have a special guest to announce. She's one of our valued associates in our business community, and her name is Sitzke Kufus. We will go deep into her journey from struggle to bliss, and we will find out how vulnerability can really inspire you to your biggest growth. Sitzke, we are beyond grateful to have you in our show. So please introduce yourself to our listeners. Hi, Jill. Hi, Frank. I'm really happy that you invited me to, um, to be interviewed. And my journey has been very intense and I really love to talk about it because that's what my whole journey was about. It was about seeing myself and letting myself be seen by the world. So that's also what I'm doing with my magazine now. I've gone through this transformational journey. Uh, I will tell you about a little bit later, but in this magazine, I'll show you my journey of transformation because a lot of things have come at the right place now. It's such a relief and I really feel the power now. It's like if I can visualize it, it was like I was living in this tube of glass. I could see I could see the world and I can see everything, but I was still in this tube. It was like a kind of prison. And now I am at the other side of this glass wall. So it's, I can really walk into this world now and that's what's happening. And I'm still, I'm still amazed by it. And I'm, Still a little bit careful, but I can see that things are flowing to me since I think it's maybe two weeks it's been. And it's really amazing to see that those things are happening. I love the analogy of looking at life through a glass tube. But for an order for our listeners to understand what it was like in that glass tube, Can you describe what your emotions were like when you were actually in there and what you could see, and but you couldn't touch? Well, I have uh, been in this tube. I can really describe it now because it's, it became clear. But while I was in this tube, I've always had this longing to be more, to have more, to... I used to... I've never really stopped dreaming. Well, everything, every time I had an idea, I was starting this up and I executed it and I did all the things that I thought were right. And sometimes I came pretty far, but in, in the end, it was always like a road that's bending off. I'm almost there and I'm bending off to the left and then I'm gone. <laughs> and well, that's happened to me a few times with, well, also with projects of which I thought this is it and this is my, my calling, this is what I have to do. It was such a disappointment then when, it's, when I didn't succeed, when it didn't go through. One of the reasons and I found out during my journey was that money has always been, has been a fear of mine. On the one hand, I don't care about money. On the other hand, I'm really fearful when I don't have it or don't see that it's going to uh, deliver money in the end. I did take some steps in the past as well to get over this fear of money. I used to have one anxiety attack a day when I didn't when it didn't come in. <laughs> And I managed it to stretch this to once every month. So that's <laughs> wow. that all this time, every time I still do have it every month when I have to pay the bills and it's like, okay, here we go again. But 
I must say, I must say that the last couple of months I maybe are different because I can control me a little bit more or my thoughts. Mm. Like it's, it's going to be there. You just have to think money is on its way to me. Money is on its way to me. Even mm. if there's nothing going on, but it's on its way to me. And I've been doing that. And that released my stress. It released oh, yeah. my stress. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, yeah, it's 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 actually very true that if you have this belief that it's on your way, we have this analogy to when you compare it, it's in the mail. It's not there with you, but it's in the mail. So you know it's coming. I also loved how you describe your attachment to money. What were your beliefs really that hold you back from getting out of this glassy prison? Well, one of my beliefs was that I think I didn't deserve it. I, I didn't really think that. It was the moment when I went to one of the events and my husband came along and he was flying me because he's a pilot. I said to people, well, if he didn't, go there I wouldn't have come and later on my husband did something and I realized that he was valuing me more than I was valuing myself it hit me like with a hammer I always knew I devaluated myself a little bit but I was still okay but I didn't know it was that deep since I've I mean, having my own business, uh, I've, I've been, I'm having an online business now. But before that, I had my own small, bu a small business. And it, I've always been very harsh on me. Like, oh, I don't deserve to buy clothes now because I uh, haven't done that and that and that. I don't deserve to uh, blah, 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 because I haven't done that, that, that. And the, the moment that hit me with my husband, I was like, that's got to change because that's what's keeping me from, from the success. And that's the only thing that is still between me and success. On the other hand, I had to express myself because that's what my journey was about, expressing me, seeing me. I had to make a video that I didn't feel like I could do. I knew in the back of my mind that this was the hurdle I had to take. If I could do the video, I knew I would value me. You know, mm -hmm. I would see me and I would value me. So those things came together. I was really in a kind of vacuum and I wanted to quit because I didn't know where to go, how to go further because I've always had this very, very deep feeling that I have to be me. And that has been my journey for life. And I've always tried to stay with me, but I was always distracted by all kinds of things. The most important distraction was me not valuing myself because I was comparing myself to Everybody, everybody, everybody. I was, I'm really amazed that I didn't go crazy. I would walk the streets and then see somebody and I was like, oh, she's more beautiful than I am. Or she's the, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, you, you can think of anything and that it was going to my mind. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible, Seska. I mean, you've gone so deep there with everything that you were feeling and, and when I look at the name of your magazine, which is Authenticity in Business, and you've all expressed so many times that all you wanted to do was be you. Yeah. But can you tell us what helped you find you? What actually got you to feeling better about you and, and feeling more complete? Well, my life has been a journey. I've, I've always been on this journey. I can't really explain. I've always had this urge to grow. I did 
all kinds of stuff uh, like workshops and because I, I liked it as well. I liked growth and I like going somewhere. I think the moment I realized that I didn't value me and I made the video and I was practicing, practicing, practicing. And I, when every time when I looked into the camera, I accepted myself more. At first I was like, oh, you got a big nose, you got this, you got that, you know. I was really being harsh. Every time I experienced it, I saw myself and it started to change. And um, I started to, I think I just started to look at me and be nice to me. To yeah. see like, oh, you're doing pretty well. I still have to learn a lot of things. But the moment when I accepted, well, this is me at this moment. And mm. it's good enough. It's good enough for now. Mm. Um, that's when, when the relief came. And that's also when Frank and you sent me this video. Yeah. I am enough. And yeah. I, it was a really funny video at first because I really liked this lady. Oh yeah, Sitsuke, you're right. We all love the video by Marisa Pierce, You Are Enough. And you can find this video on YouTube and it carries such a powerful message that we are all enough. Everybody needs to see that. Because I like to laugh as well because I'm, yeah, that's, that's one of my <laughs> relief points, you know. And when I listened to that, I, I thought, yeah, it's that simple. It's yeah. really, it's that simple. If yeah. you think you're enough if then then the world's op is open to you i agree one other thing about the journey with building my business i see now that there was always this frustration i wanted to be my own brand and have my own voice internally i had this fight mm -hmm. and now i know that it frustrated me but it was the way to go because I needed to be me. I needed to let them uh, see me and express myself. Yeah. Yeah, because that's where your power lies. When you come across as authentic, yeah. the other person that is listening or you're the other person that your message is reaching has that commonality or has that rapport that they build with you. And if you're It, there has to be a transparency and it's never easy. This is another thing where Frank and I came into your lives when you reached out to us for some help with these. And we actually took you to back to your childhood, to where all these beliefs actually began. And we talked you through how these beliefs were not really yours and how, you know, parents and peers and teachers, uh, if they have our best interest at heart at that time, whatever's coming from them is their perspective, their mirror on the world. And it's it's embedded, it's cellular. It is a, a something that you have to do to peel, like peeling an onion. You have to find your true self. And that side of things, Frank, we came in with, didn't we? It's about, I think what we saw was the the necessity to reframe these beliefs because we understand that these beliefs are not... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> these, these beliefs are not serving us. And sometimes we even don't see these beliefs because we, we don't recognize them at all. These beliefs are running in our subconsciousness and they, they are really running our lives. It's not easy to discover these beliefs and it's not easy to disguise them. But I would like to talk about something before that because you just described your, your action steps and you made a choice for yourself that you want to change your life. What led you to this decision? Why did it work now? I think it worked now because the first time we had contact, that was exactly at the right moment because I don't know what would have happened if we didn't connect because it was it was such an important point for me and the discrepancy I think you call it that way <laughs> was so big it was choosing for me or it was doing the fake me and I couldn't and I've never I never could in my life 
I knew that if I had to choose for that fake me, I would give up. I, would, I, couldn't, I couldn't even do it. And that's why I knew this was such an important, important moment. And I also think that's the moment because the, the strain was that high and big it was the the moment collapse or go through it and that's what happened when you talked to me the first time to go through it and because you helped me or you saw me and that's when and that's just what i needed at that moment to just for you to see me so i could see me Mm. We took you into being vulnerable and we created a safe zone for us three in, in our sessions. And could you describe how this being vulnerable felt to you? Well, being vulnerable is not new for me. I must say that because I've always had this deeper urge to be real, my real me, I've always dared to be vulnerable. I was scared, but I did it. And it was not the first time for me to be vulnerable, except now it was again for me. Uh, if this is not going to work or I will be not successful again, you know? And that was something... I didn't want for me and I didn't want for my children and I didn't want for my parents and I didn't want for my husband because I really promised myself that this, and I really felt that at the beginning that this was it, this is what I had to do. And I would feel really bad if I gave up and I didn't want to give up. And the main reason I don't, want to give up is for my children because it's so important for me to show them that you are the creator of your own life and that you can be the powers within you. I have to be the example for them. If I give up, what example am I giving them? So that's the reason why I haven't given up in the past it was about choosing me or the fake me and I didn't know where to go. I can actually remember those sessions and I can actually remember hearing you almost choking because the real you so wanted to come to the surface. The real you wanted permission almost to come out and give the gift that you're giving to the world now. Being the beautiful soul, the integrated Seska that we know We saw you, we felt you, we understood you, and we saw the person that you wanted to be. And we had to give you the permission to step into that paradigm. We had to give you that permission to become you, to become the person that you want to be. And eventually it took hold. And I just want you to describe the moment when it was almost like the happy dance was being done you were so flow state in creativity. So describe what the tipping point was from that moment of desperation into the light of victory, if you like, for Siska. Uh, the moment when we, when we spoke, I knew I had to give myself a break first because I was so tired and I was also uptight and I also knew that I needed to give myself a break, be nice to me. So that was the first thing I had to do. We had a holiday and I really dropped everything. And that was the first time since a long time I really dropped it. And it felt really good. <laughs> the only thing I did not drop is listening to the videos you recommended, listen to some other stuff that really motivated me but I was I could just feel there was some change going on when I came back I just had had to do this video which, which was still like a mountain to me I just started with another feeling because I saw this video I'm enough I'm enough and I 
it was kind of soothing. Yeah, you can try and you can fail and you can do it and not do it perfectly. You get there. I want to, to visualize them and to express them with my writing because I'm also a writer. I love writing. I also love creating a, a special ambiance in which you can feel relaxed and confident. So that's when I started the creation of the magazine and, and I showed it to you in the last talk we had. That's when I really felt like I expressed it, the full me. That was so powerful. I'm really still buzzing because on Monday it's going to publish it. I just feel like it, this is just good. I'm relaxed for the first time. Like, well, it's going to go and it's going to go. You know, I, I cannot do anything about it. I've done all I can do about it. That's a real difference with the uptight Sitsuko from a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is really beautiful what you shared just now thank you you described that you're tapping into this flow state of Sitzke how do you picture Sitzke in a year from now or maybe even two or three I want to help people and especially women to grow into their power I want to be the example they can follow Because I've been looking for examples, women examples, especially. And we need more feminine energy. <laughs> and I think starting a business, growing into this power, becoming self-reliant is very important. We just learn to step into that power. I would love to be an example for that. I would love to help people just, yeah, to grow into their power and release their potential. All what you shared, Sitzke, to summarize it a little bit, is that all the, the stress we create in our lives comes by the way we perceive the reality. You were the only one who could see that glassy prison. And It's hard to, I mean, we could see that too, but it's hard to describe to other people because only when you see that, you can help yourself. You came up with a decision to step into your power and all you needed from us was the permission, as Jill said it, to step into your power. That gave you a total new meaning to your life. That's how, how it feels because now you're stepping into your creativity. You radiate love. You shine and I bet you even give more energy to your whole family. It's amazing to see this transition in you and we are absolutely beyond grateful to witness this with, with you. Yeah. I kiss you. <laughs> so. Can I just add very yeah. quickly though, the fact is that you may have thought you were ready a year ago but actually you wouldn't have been who you are now today without yeah. that extra growth and also the understanding when somebody comes to you in that kind of condition you will so resonate with them because you understand it yeah and I think you know the dark days are your gifts yeah And But I you... didn't think so when they were <laughs> no. when I was no. there. <laughs> totally agree. Now I do. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are the times of your biggest growth, actually, and you can be really proud to be going through these like you did. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, we're extremely proud of you as well. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> that's true. And we love you very, very much because you are somebody who wanted to make a difference to someone else mm. and in making that difference you had to be the difference but also you understand that it's not all about you it's about other people and when we get out of our own way sometimes and we stop being frustrated with life and let it flow that also takes a lot of the complication and frustration out of our lives too and it shows that We are really here, as Jill just said it, to make the difference and really make this world for us a better place. Yeah. We're striving for here. Yeah. That's my ultimate goal. It's 
It's I want to make this a better place for my boys and for all the other children in the world. Mm. Just by just being me and doing my little brick in the wall. And since only the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that really do. With that, where can we find your magazine? Because your magazine is published yeah. on Monday. Can you tell us where we'll find you? You can find my magazine on my website. It's www.ilove-natural.com. Nothing will work unless you do. It's from <laughs> Maya Angelou. Oh, we love oh, Maya Angelou. Wow, that's fantastic. That's a great way to end, actually. So... Yeah. All we can say is, Seska, it's been an absolute pleasure to share this presence in time and to come and be a guest on our podcast. We're beyond grateful for your energy that you've brought here, your vulnerability. And Sitzke, we wish you all the best for your magazine and for your future. And you will be a massive inspiration for the world. We would just like to say a very heartfelt thanks to all our listeners, subscribers who like, share and give their love and gratitude for all we do. Well, thank you, Jill. And thank you, Frank, because you really changed my life. Thank you very much. You make us blush now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that. We feel blessed, actually. Yeah, very much so. This is Frank and Jill signing out from where your safe zone for discovering your true self is created. Spread the love guys. See you next week. Bye for now.